most of you know that I built this house about three years ago and I had every intentions of building it with the basement finished but I knew I was going to put a lot of detail into the basement and to get the house done in a timely manner I thought it'd be best to complete the house and finish the basement at a later date. So these are uh, pictures of basements that I built in the past. This is my third and hopefully final basement project. Kind of determined that there's really only four rooms that we wanted in this basement based off of what we did in our prior basements. Of course we needed a bathroom. We also wanted to add a home theater, the wet bar area, and a game room. Now as you look at the plans, the red area is where we're putting the bar. It's a 10 by 16 area. And the nice thing about that particular area is one, it's excluded, and two, it's close to the utilities needed for the wet bar. You can see the blue area is where the bathroom's at. The yellow area is the utility room for the entire house, which means I have water, gas, electrical, and sewage all right there. It was a budget-friendly location for the lounge. A couple years ago, we decided to start planning for this basement. Uh, we use House and Pinterest to get most of our ideas. And then we take those ideas and we use a program called SketchUp. It's a free program on the internet I use. I think Google owns it. And it helps you bring the ideas that you want to put into your project to life before you actually spend the money and the time. It's kind of nice to visualize what it's going to look like uh, prior to making a big investment, especially for my wife who has a hard time visualizing anything I think of. Now the computer program is just a starting point. A lot of times we'll make changes to the plans. Um, as we build things, we have better ideas or we like different combinations better when we see them. So I started the basement in October of 2020, right during the COVID time. So it uh, worked out well. There was still a lot of material on the market and I didn't face any back orders at the time. So it took me about four and a half, five months to complete the project. And that's all the rooms in the basement, not just the wet bar. Uh, I did do everything other than the drywall. So all the electrical, the plumbing, um, the tile work, the floorings, all the cabinetry, the fireplace, all the lighting. I did that all myself. Um, I'm self-taught, so I learned a lot of it on YouTube from others. And my father was in the construction industry for a long time. He's always there as backup. And then my brother also is pretty knowledgeable in the field. The construction was one thing, the decorations were another. My wife's pretty good at colors and planning those types of things. So I relied on her for that. Like the rest of the house, the lounge and basement areas are all automated uh, with voice activation and remote switching on all light switches. And the sound system in the lounge is basically Sonus One speakers, which are pretty much played through a phone app. So sit back and have a glass of wine. Let me show you what I did why I did it and I'll give you approximate cost. Okay, we're walking up to the lounge from the game room in the basement. I'll break this video into three small segments. I'll cover the wet bar area along with the appliances first. Then I'll cover the fireplace and the accessories there. And then finally the shiplap wall and some of the decor and lighting that we used in the basement. Okay, starting with the wet bar area. I really like the way it turned out. It's probably one of my favorite parts of the basement. Uh, let's talk about the bottom part first. Um, all the cabinetry I built myself. Um, I used three quarter inch plywood that I got from Home Depot and Lowe's and Menards, whoever had it the cheapest price at the time. Um, I learned how to build those cabinets on YouTube. It's actually pretty simple. I used pocket screws. Uh, the whole pocket screw um, system actually is pretty good for a beginner. 
door panels are actually metal that I bought at Lowe's that I spray painted gold. Uh, I inserted the metal in there instead of the wood panel. I thought it'd give it a good look. The hardware on the cabinetry is actually good stuff. It's actually from Amazon. It's uh, leather wrapped gold handles. Pretty unique and uh, pretty good quality. I'll put a link in the description. The wine cooler, it's uh, I believe 16 bottles, dual climate, so it's got two sides. Uh, one side we keep full of wine, the other side we keep uh, drinks for kids in it, Gatorade, Pop, and whatnot. You're looking at the ice maker right now, it's a it's, uh, gravity drained ice maker. It doesn't have a refrigerated uh, unit in it actually, it creates the ice, the ice will eventually melt and it keeps recreating ice. The nice thing about that is it's always got the fresh ice. Now you're looking at the quartz countertop. I can't remember the name of the um, quartz, but I'll put it in the description when I do find it. It's beautiful stuff. We have it in our kitchen upstairs too. We kind of wanted to bring that color down into the basement. Now moving on to the upper part of the cabinetry. Uh, I'm not sure how many bottles I hold there, but I'm guessing anywhere between um, maybe 60 bottles per side. But I actually stole the whole entire idea from Cooper's Hawk. It's a restaurant here in Indianapolis. I believe they're all over the place. really like the look of that. The brick is probably my most favorite part of the basement. You can buy those little brick tiles at Lowe's. It's actually real brick. It's just uh, maybe a twelfth of the width of a brick. Um, all the mortar was tooled by me. It's actually really easy to do. Um, I really enjoyed the, the brick project and I actually used it throughout the basement uh, quite a bit. Now you can see that I uh, squeezed a small TV in between the two upper cabinets. I think it's a 42 inch television set. Fits the space well. There's a small shelf right below it. Can't really put a whole lot on there other than pretty much the remote controls and lighters and bottle openers. Finish out the top with a little bit of crown just to kind of dress it up a little bit. So let's talk about that fireplace wall. The fireplace is a great focal point for the room. On both sides of it, I have metal racks that I bought on Amazon to hold those wine bottles. It's wrought iron, good quality, fairly inexpensive. And uh, I think each rack holds nine or 11 bottles of wine. I think there's enough room for maybe 60 bottles on that wall. Obviously the fireplace is the uh, big feature there. It's a direct vent, means it does not have a vent to the outside, it vents inside. Um, it's safe, it doesn't smell, it looks great, it's propane, and that's a real flame you're looking at. You can see on another video I made recently, I hung that picture and put that mantle up after the fact. It was my final touches to this project. Now we're looking at the tile on the fireplace. This is probably one of the most difficult projects I've ever done was this tile project mainly because of the angle uh, it turned out looking great but the amount of time I spent on it I think I spent three days tiling that fireplace which probably should only take me a couple hours I tried to talk to my wife into allowing me to go vertical with the tile and she wouldn't budge so I got stuck putting a diagonal uh, herringbone pattern on it so the shiplap wall, um, like I said, you can get the shiplap from Menards. Um, that's usually where I get it. That's MDF. Get three or four different sizes. I believe that's eight inch uh, shiplap. Paints great. It's pre-primed. Now this picture on the wall, I, this is um, something I created from Pinterest. My wife really liked it on Pinterest and I just told her I could create that with her own wood from the property. So one Sunday afternoon I built it and uh, that was the end of it. When it comes to the lighting in the room, I've got a lot. I've got the can lights uh, in the perimeter or the drop down ceiling. And then I also have this LED strip lighting um, actually behind the crown molding I have up there. I, I cut a notch in that crown molding and then I have the uh, LED lights taped to the inside of it. 
gives it a nice glow. And then that center light, I think we got from Wayfair. It was originally in our bedroom. Uh, I thought it was too small for the bedroom, so we moved it downstairs and it fits that area pretty good. Now the floor is a vinyl plank. I think it's luxury vinyl plank, whatever that means. It's about three or four dollars a square foot. Got it from a flooring company. I couldn't find it anywhere um, at the large um, retail stores, but for the most part, it's a good stuff for a basement. It comes with a pad, it's waterproof and uh, scratch resistance, so it's kind of a no brainer for the basement. The cowhide I bought from iCowhide online. I think it's seven foot by six foot, roughly. Uh, it's a great little touch. I can tell you one thing, uh, it really stunk when we first got it, uh, but they told us to put it outside for a couple weeks, so we did on a porch and uh, it pretty much removed the smell from it. So I broke the pricing down into three different categories. The first one was materials, which included the fireplace. That came in about $4,100. Now the contractor would charge you for labor and probably additional for the customization. And I'm guessing that would be between twelve to fifteen thousand dollars more than what I spent. Now the appliances, the ice maker, and the refrigerator cost me fifteen hundred dollars, and then the decor was about two thousand dollars, which included the lighting. So I'm all in for about seventy-six hundred. Uh, contractor probably would have charged me fifteen to eighteen thousand dollars for the same thing. I hope you have enjoyed this. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'll put links to everything in the description. If you like this kind of content, give me a thumbs up and subscribe.